so he's locked into his city to stay there. Witness some of the modern tyrannies that are going on around the world today. Now, he, he goes to hearing and he talks about all of the pleasurable things that you can hear, praise and, and, and that type of thing, but, but there are, he recognizes them for the fraud that they are, that these people praise him, that they do it uh, out of flattery. Now, he does an interesting thing. He skips the nose and goes to the mouth. Talks about how all these great foods are prepared for him. And, but because they're there, there's no desire for them. He has them readily. So he loses desire and appreciation of great things, great food. As opposed to the common man, when he encounters something rare and, and good, he really appreciates it. Now, he's done something. In skipping the nose, Simonides is not going to let him get away with that. So Simonides points out to him that all of these perfumes and colognes that he wears do not benefit him, but they benefit others. Now, there's the key. The central one deals with others. And this is the theme of Plato's Thesis, that the tyrant must learn to appreciate others and use them to honor him by doing good deeds for them. So, he goes on to talk about um, sex. Uh, it, it, it's not love. As a human being, the family by nature requires love, but even a tyrant can't trust his family. The, 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 the son will rise up and kill him and take his, his, his power. Uh, the wife will uh, conspire against him. So he lacks in this aspect as well. Now, he's done... Um, he tells Simonides that he knows the difference between the good and the bad, and, and that he talks about the brave man and the wise man and uh, the just man. The problem is that he cannot tolerate them in his regime. For the brave man will fight for his freedom. The wise man will contrive against him. It's a very important word in uh, Xenophon. Xenophon uses, in the Greek is mechanema, he uses contrivance in, in many of his books. Contrivance is very important for him. Now, the third one he talked about was the just man. Now, the just man, the people will want to be ruled by him, so he has to get rid of him as well. Now, the central one is the wise man who will contrive against him. This is important because as Xenophon has pointed out, or as Hero has pointed out, Simonides is seen as a wise man. So what is his contrivance? And this is what makes, I think, Xenophon's work great. Um, now it should be pointed out that uh, Xenophon wrote a book called The Anabasis, in which he talks about a military action that went on into Persia. And what he relates as they're traveling through Persia is that there's great wealth there and that the people are ill-equipped to defend themselves. So, in fact, it was said that Xenophon was offering a carrot here. Uh, look at that great wealth over there. Let's, and, it, and they can't defend themselves. Let's go take it. Now, it was said also that uh, Alexander the Great, when he did his mission into Persia, carried uh, Xenophon's book in Avassus as a field guide. So, this is a contrivance that Xenophon has created. Now, there's another contrivance here in the hero, in that he has hero talk about when an individual brings him something that is uh, very beneficial or, or appreciated by the tyrant, 
that individual knows that he will be paid great amounts for it. Now, this is the carrot. See, Xenophon, or Simonides was well known for his greed. He catered to tyrants. He wrote poems praising them and amassed greater fortune as a result of it. Therefore, he would set up, be set up as um, a role model for the sophist. The sophist of the period were people who would sell information, and particularly they catered to tyrants, justifying their regime. But they would sell information for money. Uh, they were greedy, just like Simonides. But now, Xenophon has held Simonides up as this great example of greed, successful greed. And he's also dangled a carrot, the piece called Hero. Now, the work is done for the sophist. All they have to do is deliver it and then be paid well for it. Now, I mentioned that I don't feel that the tyrant is going to um, see all of this negativity in his life. But if it's shown to him, and he has to think about it, it's going to make him think. And I think that this is what Xenophon brought to the table. He brought a device that would allow tyranny to reconsider itself. And I, I also find very interesting that if the young Alexander the Great was carrying Xenophon's works, he has to have seen himself as this tyrant who could be honored and loved. And in fact, to be conquered by Alexander was not a bad thing. He brought culture, libraries, he, brought, uh, he allowed freedom of religion, but also brought better ideas. Therefore, he benefited the people and became Alexander the Great. And I think that this is the difference between Xenophon and Plato. Plato brought theory. Xenophon took the theory and put it into action. And that ends my uh, lecture on tyranny. Thank you.